Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another project series. In this series, we're going to be building and deploying a Vue.js application that uses Firestore on its back end. So Firestore is similar to the real-time database that Firebase offers, but it's supposed to be more scalable. It's, it's supposed to have a um, more of a, an intuitive data model. It's also easier to administer. So once we build this application, we're going to compile it for production and we're going to push it to GitHub pages for hosting okay since we're using firebase which is a cloud database it's not an actual backend that we have to manage we can use just a simple shared hosting account or something like github pages so we're going to set up a workflow where you can easily update the app and then you can compile it and then easily push it to your live site okay and as you can see i already have it deployed but i'm going to delete this after and we're going to start from scratch you can see it's on my my um bradtraversy.github.io and I just want to give you a quick demo so we just list our employees here and each employee has a department so we have IT and sales and we're ordering them by department and if we go down over here you'll see we have this eye icon if I click that it takes us to the employee page where it shows us the employee ID the department they're in the position um, we can delete the employee if we want so if I go ahead and click delete click OK and you can see that employee was deleted uh, we can edit the employee by clicking this button down here and, and as I should mention we're using materialize CSS so let's say we want to change Karen's um, position to let's say senior uh, salesperson I don't even know if that's a real position but it doesn't matter we'll click submit and you can see it redirects us back to her page and she's now a senior salesperson we can of course add a new employee so we'll say 006 for the ID name let's just say Harry White department we'll say IT position we'll say um, we'll say software engineer and submit and you can see that now Harry has been added okay so that's what we'll be building guys we'll be building it deploying it um, man, creating a Firestore, which you can see here. This is the Firebase backend using the, the new Firestore platform. And we have all of our employees here. All right, so that's what we'll be building. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. I apologize if my voice is still a little raspy. It's taken me forever to get over this infection or whatever the hell this is. But uh, hopefully you enjoy the series. And let's get started. Hey guys, if you've been watching my videos for a while and you really like what I do and I've helped you out a lot, consider becoming a patron. Even for $1 per month, it pushes me to keep bringing you guys the best content I possibly can. There's reward tiers for discounts, free Udemy courses, personal support, and more. So check out the Patreon link in the description below for more info. All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is create our Firestore database. So you want to make sure you're logged into Google and go to console.firebase.google.com. And we're going to go ahead and create a new project. You can see I have this ViewFS dev. This is the initial project I created. So I'm going to create a new one uh, called ViewFS-prod. And we're going to create that project. Okay, so now that's been created, and what we want to do from here is go over to database. Now, I'm not going to implement authentication. We can look into that in another video or possibly a course. I do plan on doing a view and Vuex course. Um, but what we're going to choose here is the Cloud Firestore option, not the real-time database. So we're going to say try Firestore beta. At the time you're watching this, it might not still be in beta. And we're going to use test mode, okay, so that we don't have to authenticate or anything like that. And we'll click Enable. And if you guys watched my Angular Firestore series, um, this is all the same thing. We're just setting up Firestore. And you'll probably, if you did watch that, and now you're going to do this series, you'll notice that that Vue is actually much easier to work with than Angular. Um, I, I love both frameworks, uh, but I think Angular is, is really good for large projects. I think Vue is great for smaller projects. Uh, they're both great frameworks. So let's say add collection, and we want to add a collection called employees. Okay, that's going to be our only collection. 
and each employee will have a couple different fields. So the, this document ID, this is basically the unique ID that Firestore uses. This is auto-generated. We don't want to mess with this. We do want an employee ID, though, that we enter. So we're going to say employee underscore ID. That's the field. For this one, we're going to just do 001. It doesn't really matter what you use. I'm just going from 001, 002, and so on. So the next thing we want for this employee is the name. And let's do, we'll just say John Doe. We'll do another field. This is going to be the department. So D-E-P-T. And we'll say John Doe is in IT. And then we'll do his position. And for the position, we'll say database admin. And save. And we should get one. We have our employees collection here. And we have one document in that collection and you can see the different fields so let's create another one so we'll go add document and again employee underscore id we'll say 002 let's do um, name we'll say sarah johnson just making up names here and then department for sarah let's say she's in sales and position We'll just say sales, uh, sales lead, and save. We'll go ahead and add one more document. So add document, employee ID, 003. Let's say name, Sam Smith. Department is going to be IT, <coughs> excuse me. And position, let's say server admin, and save. All right, so now we have our database, at least in our initial database that we want to work with. So now we're ready to begin on our application. All right, guys, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to install the Vue CLI, which is the command line interface to create Vue applications, to compile them and build them out. Um, to run the server and, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So we need to install that globally and you're going to need Node.js installed because Node.js comes with the Node Package Manager and that's what we use to install it. So if you don't have Node installed, just go to nodejs.org and download and install it. Then you're going to want to just do npm install dash g for global and then view dash cli. And I actually already have it installed, so mine may go faster than yours. All right, so we'll clear that out. Next thing we want to do is you want to go to wherever you want to create your project folder. I'm in, I'm in a folder called Projects. This is where I want to create it. So I'm going to just go ahead and say View, Init. I want to use Webpack. And then I'm going to call this Employee Manager. Okay, so you want View, Init, the template, which we're using Webpack, and then the name of the application. So that'll create a folder called Employee Manager. Uh, well, actually, we have to go through these questions first, but it will create the application folder for us. So project name, description, we'll say simple employee. Uh, I spelled that wrong. Oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, author, so that's fine. Let's see. So you want to choose runtime and compiler. You can install you can install without the compiler, but it's only 6K lighter, which is nothing. So you always want to choose the compiler. And we want the router, so we're going to say yes. ESLint, uh, I'm going to say no to that. I don't like to use linters in tutorials because I don't want unnecessary errors. That aren't really errors. They're just um, you know formatting recommendations. We're not going to use unit testing, so we'll say no, no end-to-end uh, -end testing. And then I'm going to use NPM for my package manager, but you can also use Yarn. And then that's it. All right, so this spawn e NPM ENet error, I'm not sure exactly what that means. It doesn't affect anything, but uh, if you guys know what that is, then you can let us know. But uh, let's go ahead and clear this out. So now we, we've initialized our projects. Let's CD into Employee Manager. And from here, we're just going to run npm install. And that'll install all the dependencies that we need. So it'll take a look at the, the package.json file, all the dependencies, which we'll take a look at. And it's installing all those for us.
Wow, I'm really losing my voice. It's been like, uh, I don't know, almost a week. Okay, so now what we want to do is one more thing to install, and that is Firebase. So npm install Firebase. If you're using npm less than version 5, you want to make sure you do dash dash save. Uh, and it doesn't hurt even if you are using version 5. But that'll make sure that it's included in your dependencies. All right, so that should be all set. Now what I want to do is open this folder up in my code editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code, so I can simply say code dot. If you're using Atom, you can do Atom dot, or you can just open it up you know, manually from within the editor. Close the welcome page, and there we go. So now this is our, our application structure. So if we look at package.json, we have in our main dependencies, view itself, the view router, and Firebase, and then all our all of our dev dependencies, including Webpack, including um, tools to minify, tools to compile ES6 and uh, ES6 Plus with Babel. So just a bunch of dev dependencies. And to start our server, we can do npm run dev or npm start. Uh, to build, we can do npm run build, and that will build it all out into static assets. And we'll do that towards the end. All right, so we'll close that up. And if we look in source, that's our main application. So we have our main JS file. This is like the entry point where we bring in view. Um, we bring in our main app component. We bring in the router. We instantiate view with a main element. So this is saying look for the div with the ID of app or the element with the ID of app um, and then insert the app template. And if we look at our index HTML file, <coughs> excuse me, we have a div with the ID of app. So this is essentially where our view app goes. All right, I'm just gonna change the title here. Look a little better. All right, we'll save that. And we should be able to start our server up to this point. So what I'm gonna do is open my inline terminal or my integrated terminal with control tilde, or you can go to view integrated terminal. And we're gonna run npm run dev. And it should open, I believe, on uh, localhost 80. It, I think it's 8080 by default, but I think I have something open on that port. So mine's 8081. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just grab a browser. And we'll go to localhost 8081. And here's our default view application. I'm just going to snap it to the side here. Wow, I have a lot of stuff open. All right. And we'll go ahead and open up our Chrome console with F12. Now you may you may want to install the view extension for your or for um, Chrome Dev Tools. It can be really helpful. Um, I'm not going to get into that. I, I want this to be kind of a, a quick series focusing on just Firestore and View. Um, we're also not going to be using Vuex, which is the state manager. I do plan on doing more videos on Vue because it's been a while. Um, and I actually am, I'm actually considering it for either my next Udemy course or the one after the next because it is a great framework. I actually prefer Vue over React and I know a lot of you guys are going to hate me for that, but um, I do. I prefer Vue and Angular over React, but it's all preference. You know, there is no best framework. It's, it's all about preference. It's also about the, the, the particular project you're working on. Now, what we're looking at here is if we look in the source and components, it's this hello world view dot view file. And this is the hello world component that comes standard with the CLI. And you can see we basically just have a template. A template needs to have one single element and then every everything inside of that single element. And down here, you can see where we have our script tags. We have the name of the component and then the data object. And then down here, some simple styling. All right, so a view component is very simple, and that's what I really like about it. This message right here, this is this welcome to your Vue.js app, and that's coming from this right here. Okay, so we're not going to use this hello world component. This is just the, the um, boilerplate. What I want to do now before we stop and, and get into the next video is just create our Firebase config file. So we're basically going to need two files, Firebase config and Firebase init. And I'm going to put those right in the components folder. So let's say new file, 
and we'll say Firebase config.js. And let's also create a file called Firebase init.js, okay, camel case. So we'll start with the, um, let's start with the config. So we'll open that up. And then you need all your specific Firebase info or Firestore info in here. And you need to export it as a default object. So we're going to say export default. And then if we go to our Firestore, and let's go just to the project overview, and then click Add Firebase to your web app. You'll get all this information. It'll be completely different from mine. But you want to get everything that's in this config object. So I'm just going to grab all of these key value pairs, copy that, and then I'm going to paste it in this export default. And that's all we need in this file. So we'll save that. That's our config. So now we'll go to our init file. And we want to do a couple things here. We first want to import Firebase. Remember we did npm install Firebase. That's what we're bringing in here. So we're saying import Firebase from Firebase. And we're using our ES6 module syntax here. We also want to import the Firestore. So let's say import. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to use semicolons. I'm going to try not to because that's the standard for view. And I want to try to stick, you know, try to try to be consistent here. So let's say Firebase slash Firestore. Okay, now what we want to do is import the config file we just created. So we'll say import Firebase config from and that's going to be from dot slash, meaning the same folder we're in and then Firebase config. Okay, then we want to create a variable called Firebase app. And we want to initialize the app by setting that to Firebase dot initialize app. And then we just want to pass in our Firebase config. Okay, and then the last thing we want to do here is just export default. And we want to export the Firebase app dot Firestore. Uh, no, it's not camel case. It's just Firestore all lowercase. Just like that. So that's our initializer. So we'll save that. And that should be it as far as configuring Firebase. OK, and just to make sure our app still works. OK, so in the next video, we're going to start to build out some of our components. Um, we're going to use the router. We're basically going to have a, a couple different pages, one to add the, the, the employee, one to edit the employee. Of course, we need the home page where we list the employees. So we're going to get to that in part two.